Hi everybody, it's Lynn here and I'm down at the Garlic Farm again for the next ladies lunch. Once a month the business ladies of the Isle of Wight get together. There doesn't, there's no membership fee, we all just pay £20. Part of it goes for our lunch and part of which goes to the Isle of Wight Youth Trust. And I am going to, hi Jess, um, just, it's alright, go past it's on me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I am just just getting ready to have lunch with all these lovely ladies. Hi Karen, let me just show you. So here we are, look, lots of ladies chatting. This is the garlic farm. This is my accountant here. And we have all sorts of people in the room. Hi Paul. Um, we have Lifeline, with, um, which is a security firm. We have independent midwife. We have um, a, 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 an accountant, a bookkeeper, people from the local bank. Hi Paul. Um, Pilates teachers, therapists all sorts of people in the room and as you can see they're all chatting away um, and they're having uh, you know we we do the networking first before lunch we, we arrive at 11 o'clock at our lovely garlic farm we get a coffee over there and then we um, oh that's our speaker today Zarina some of you might know Zarina she's in just walking away um, I will be live streaming when she starts her talk but I probably cut this broadcast and start again um, and then um, she's talking about mindfulness. <laughs> okay, it's all right, people walking past. Um, so uh, just thought I'd just show you, um, and any ladies on the Isle of Wight who want to join, it's not no membership, you just need to get in touch and we can get you on a list and keep you informed and you can come as and when you can. That's Serena walking around here now. She is the speaker. Give us a wave, there we go. <laughs> Just telling everybody you are the speaker. Do you, want to, do you want to say what you're talking about? Come, come next. Oh, well, let's, wait, wait, let's do it. Okay. So tell people what you're talking about. Hello, everyone. I will be talking about decision making. Decision making. Right. Yes. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank <you. laughs> Lovely. Thank you. So Zarina's done a lot of networking with us, and um, whoops, she. Uh, she does a lot of talks, talks on mindfulness as well. So, um, as I say, lots of. I think we've. I think we're 31 ladies today. Or there's a hotel owner. Owner. There's somebody who does. This lady does some white wireless. And, um, I don't think we've got white fibre in the room today. Our broadband providers, but um, we have so many lovely people in the room. Um, we have somebody who's thinking of becoming um, a. Um, let's say, thinking of starting up a business as a virtual assistant which I'm sure will go down really well with a lot of the ladies in here who want to outsource so I hope that you like that little look into the garlic farm anybody who's coming to the island for a holiday uh, Paul I know you are no we are yeah, well it's a sort of classroom let me let me just show you. it's an education is the education room at the garlic farm let's just show you around like that it is the education room so you know above me here is learn and discover all you need to know about garlic that sort of thing so there's um you know it is it is the education room for the garlic farm the garlic farm is something you need to do when you come to the island um this is lovely and over here who organizes the event alison give us a wave <laughs> alison has organized these events for about three years and um, they've just grown in, in strength so but the garlic farm is a place that you do need to visit if you come to the island. The only problem is um, it has no bus coming by. But in three years, um, I've only missed three ladies' lunches. It's one a month. And I've missed those because I was on granny duty. The rest I have not missed, even though the buses don't come here. That shows you the power of the network and how all the lovely ladies have given me a lift so that I can get to and fro because I can't get here by public transport. So anyway, I think it's nearly time that we were sitting down. I think Zarina will be starting in a minute. I will start the broadcast again. Um, or actually, I might just keep... I don't know. It depends how quickly they're going to start. Um, so I might just keep it going. It, um, let's just see around the room again. There we are. So I hope lots of you have got networking as part of your marketing mix if you are running a business. This is lovely Susan out here. And... So, yeah, okay. <laughs> We're actually going to start, so I'm actually going to um, going to sit down, but I keep the camera rolling because we'll go straight into the talk. So, here we go. So, but lots and lots of friendships have started in this room and in this group. We do have some new people. Hi, Cindy, give us a wave. 
Cindy of Lifeline, test it Tuesday. And she's always sending tweets out about testing your, like, testing your smoke alarms on a Tuesday. Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, and here's lovely Susan. Give us a wave, Susan. Susan is a graphic designer. <laughs> Looks like she's got some work with her to give to somebody. Is that some assignments? Oh, <laughs> here we go. So, righty ho. So, there we go. Just about to start the meeting. So what I'll do is I'll keep the camera rolling and then um, we will start. I'll... So as I say, lots and lots of, um, lots and lots of people here networking. So if you are running a business or you run events, really put networking as part of your marketing mix. There's, it all begins with people starting to get to know each other, the no like and trust factor. And of course, networking, I run my own networking group as well, but I attend as many other networking events as I can. Hi Jane, give us a wave. There's Jane, my hairdresser. <laughs> Jane is my hairdresser. Um, and I'm not sure whether we met here or not, but um, you know, there we are, Jane and Melanie there chatting with each other. So. Um, real hubbub in the room, um, so, but a lovely ha happy buzz going on in here I think you'll see. Oh we've got um, the lady in the grey there, that's, that's Tracy behind Cindy, she, um, she's a party light consultant. Um, the lady in the green shirt, she is uh, white wireless, um, so broadband providers. Next to her is a hotel owner, um, Ariel, who runs a lovely hotel over um, here on the island that's actually great hi vicky nice to see you coming in lots of you coming in those of you just coming in with i'm down at the garlic farm for the ladies um, and it's just about to start we're having a speaker um, zarina is giving us a talk on decision making making decisions so um, she's a mindful she does a lot on mindfulness here we go right okay right. We'll turn it around charities and supporting community interest companies um, and I've got put some of these on the tables um, so if you are involved with a charity or a CIC um, you could get up to £5,000 worth of uh, discovery grant um, unfortunately we don't do it for just clubs or other charities um, and there's uh, rules and regulations on there how you can do it it's purely and simply a, a lottery and you can put as many in and as many times as you like and uh, once every three months, I wish you pull one out of the hat um, and choose. We've had three people so far on the island benefit. We've had Footprint Trust, um, Nature Therapy CIC, and also Hodgster CIC, the people that do work with the horses. Um, and they've all received the maximum amount of £5,000. So um, if you are involved in a charity or have close connections to a charity, or you are yourself, or involved in a community interest company, um, take one of these leaflets, have a read. If you've got any questions, come and ask me. Um, and um, we are, in fact, holding an event um, in April, um, actually in the branch, again for um, promoting these. So um, I'm sure you'll all be invited. Um, so, yeah, that's just it. So if you've got any questions, come and ask me. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, of course, if anybody does have any announcements, if you just let me know before in the future, and I'll, um, I'll let you have a chat. 
And Lynn has. <laughs> so that <laughs> ways too. No, it was just that um, Alison asked me what was in Lilac Lil, and I thought, oh, I better better tell you, Lilac Lil was my trolley, by the way, and she gave me a lift, and it was. Oh, and by the way, what I do want to say is. I struggle to get here because there's no public transport. I've only missed three ladies' lunches in the whole of three years nearly that you've been running. And that's a credit to the people in the room who pick me up and drop me off. Uh, Alison was uh, the, uh, the, the, my chauffeur today, the driver today. <laughs> um, but when, when we put Lila Lil in her car, she said, why is it so heavy? These two books um, I've just got free. You know, if you watch on the internet, this is High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. And um, your, your press release is Breaking My Heart by Janet Murray. I think you know Janet Murray, don't you, um, Alison? Great people to watch. These were, okay, I got these free. All I had to do was pay the shipping. They are advertising on the internet. So if you want to uh, link with me and I'll see if I can find you the links. You know, there's lots of deals come up like this on the internet. So, you know, keep in touch if you want to know. I'll find you the links. Yeah, so it's just shipping costs, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, if you want to know more about you can let me know before or during the announcement. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll hand over to um, Serena O'Donnell, who's going to teach us about decision making, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm terrible at making decisions. Thank you very much. You may have made it, but not the penalty. And this is a full machine. Okay, ladies, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to meet with you and have a little talk. Decisions is something that we are doing or making every single day, so many times a day, that we probably will lose count even if we start counting. Everything requires decision, whether we are aware of it or not. And then you notice one interesting thing, that some people seem to be very fast in their decision making. It just comes to them like a snap of fingers, and they made a decision. And sometimes the decisions are really, really good. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you can see people who agonize over anything. I do understand it. Uh, sometimes I'm going to this category when I open my wardrobe and look at my clothes. Oh my god, <laughs> what I'm going to wear. Uh, and I can uh, sometimes end up, close my eyes, pull something. Yeah, this will do. But actually, in some cases, you can't just shut your eyes and pull something out of the wardrobe. You have to do something different about the way you're making decisions. But probably the first step you want to start your journey to decision making is uh, to understand what type of decision maker you are. Because actually there are two main types of decision makers, which is called system one decision makers and system two decision makers. If you are very, very interested, there is a beautiful book um, which is called Thinking Fast and Slow by Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman and you can find it on the internet, they are not very expensive those books but um, it gives beautiful description of how we think, how we make decisions and how you can improve your thinking habits and as a result decisions that you make. Uh, you don't have to make particular notes at the moment because um, I sent Alison some handouts which you will receive after this event and there is a reading list with few more really good books and sources of information listed. But um, would you like to test yourself right now? Very quickly. <laughs> decision makers you are. Okay, so my question, I will tell you a question. Uh, ask you, and then when I cut my hands, you will have to give an answer. You can go and all together. Okay? So, everyone is ready. If you have five pieces of equipment, which makes five widgets in five minutes, how many, how long will it take, how many minutes will it take hundred machines to make hundreds of widgets? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. 
Uh, other options? Anyone has a different option? I was missing. Anyone is hesitant, not sure? I'd have to write it down. Mm. Do <laughs> <laughs> okay. Write it down okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's numbers. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 my mass is probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just about mass. Yeah, exactly. As soon as the word five is mentioned. It's not about mass at all. It's about what, what you ask us to do. Um, and um, actually, this did identify that we have in this group quite a high percentage of system one thinkers who were able to give answer reasonably quickly. However, not as fast as some people do, which does show that you also possess some of the elements of system two thinking. You took a little bit of your time to think, because some people start shouting answers to me as soon as they clap. And they've been in groups where it's happened straight away, immediately. So what are those two systems? System one is um, where people are very impulsive, they're, all, they're going on their gut feeling. They immediately sort of, uh, even before they realize what is in their head, they blur it out. Yeah? Very, very fast. System two thinking people, they will spend time thinking about every word. Every one of the words. <laughs> then they will take a piece of paper and write and check. Does it look right? Does it sound right? What if it isn't? Do I need to consult with Encyclopedia Britannica? <laughs> Just in case. It's extreme example, but this is just explaining that some people, they like to take their time and think and um, deliberate and consider different options. And this is your system to thinkers. So system one is very fast, very, very fast. And if you will take like a line between two extremes, you are probably about here, based on the answers you gave me. You were fast, however, you give it a sort. And the answers you gave were correct answers. So why it is so important? Because it also explains uh, why people procrastinate. They never have enough information. Because you can research as long as you wish, as long as you have done. <coughs> but one of the important criteria in decision making, successful and effective decision making, is actually knowing when to stop. And having this cut off point where you know it is enough, it is good enough. Yes, you can do better, but it does satisfy all basic requirements. Whether it is a checklist, statutory requirements, legislation, or it is something else, whatever other standards you are adhering to, knowing where to stop, having your own internal cut-off point is quite important. Why is that? Because we actually tend to jump to conclusions. We tend to jump to conclusions quite a lot. And this is particularly an issue for people of, uh, who are mainly system one thinkers. Because they can make very fast decisions, very, very quickly, and those decisions may not be right. And actually, the faster you make a decision, the more likely the decision to be wrong. So give yourself a little bit of time. And actually, uh, according to science, it takes between three and seven seconds between decision made in our head and moment in time when we realize that we did make a decision. So as a minimum, think or give yourself 10 seconds, count until 10 before you answer. It will give your time 
to process and discover yourself, realize yourself if there was a mistake in your thinking pattern, in your answer. So it's very simple. And um, actually now I suggest that we do jump to conclusions a little bit. Okay? Uh, can you just tell me what can we see here? Is it big enough for people? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> ABC. 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 Yeah. ABC. Yeah. ABC. Yeah. ABC. Yeah. <laughs> what do we have here? Can you see it? Sentence. Yeah? But uh, can you read the sentence? Yes. <laughs> So do you see here? Oh, it's a B. Okay. Who says it is B? Who says it is so thin? Okay. Who says this is B? Who says this is so thin? Thank you. Absolutely. Now, on approached the bank. Can you please give me examples what bank it could be? Bank is a bank. What is it? What other bank? Restaurant. Absolutely. What other bank? River bank. River bank. Yeah, absolutely. Who is on? What versions are? Bottle bank. <laughs> Who is on? <laughs> Could it be a dog? Yes. I think I'm like that. The doors. Friends. Captain Michaels. You never know these days. Each one of you, when you read a sentence, yeah. consciously or unconsciously, but you already decided for yourself. Who is on? What was the bomb? What exactly it was? My mum was on. And if I didn't ask you who who is on, what the bomb could be, you probably couldn't give it a second thought. But when I did ask you, you knew exactly what bomb you have in mind. And here, some of you in those examples were absolutely right saying that the, uh, what is in the middle could be interpreted either way. Could be interpreted either way. But because these uh, sort of uh, two symbols in the middle, one symbol in the middle, is between letters, probably for many of you, first inclination was to see it as a letter. And here, the first inclination Jump into conclusion was probably it's likely to be a number, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And because you have some traits of system two thinking, and because I already asked you a question about widgets, you knew there would be a trick. <laughs> <laughs> So you made sure you didn't jump into conclusion your head first. And it is very important to know and understand that actually our mind does trick us all the time. It's evolutionary thing. It, just imagine, 150,000 of years ago, two prehistorical humans. There is no language here. They can't communicate as we do, and there's grunting. And one of them sitting, gathering something, looking around, oh. and the other, oh. The first one was going to say, you know there is something yellow in the grass there. I think it is a lion or a tiger. And then the other one said, oh no, it just shades. What happens then? The one who thought it is a tiger or a lion got away, survived, passed his or her DNA through generations. The one who just grunted, oh, it's okay, 
was eaten. <laughs> and so their DNA was not passed through generation. And so as a result of similar incidents through hundreds of thousands of years, we developed negativity bias in our thinking. We develop negativity bias, which means that we are more likely, we are more inclined to see things negatively than things positively. And sometimes it is difficult to stop ourselves to think negatively, although we have a choice and we can decide to think differently when we catch ourselves thinking negatively. There are a lot of other biases. One of them was very evident here bias of confirmation. If those two are letters, this must be the letter. If those two are numbers, this must be the number. Our brain loves shortcuts. Because while you will sit there gathering you or whatever you are, herbs or mushrooms or whatever, and uh, consulting with Encyclopedia Britannica or whatever it was equivalent, uh, 150,000 years ago, this animal will come and eat you. <laughs> and so our brain developed ability to jump to conclusions fast and also to sort of operate within this look like this, so it must be this comparison system. We do it all the time. We not necessarily pay attention to this. <coughs> There is also another bias, uh, survival bias, and it's not necessarily about physical survival, but what we do remember is things that were successful, things that we like that were successful. If we don't like them, we will not remember them. And so sometimes we think if something works somewhere else, it will work for us as well if we do it exactly in the same way. It will not. Or not always. So we have to think and analyze and adjust our decisions to reality which we live in. Um, of course, I was given not enough time to cover the whole subject. <laughs> and um, rest assured, I run training course. Uh, and there are different formats, like half-day or full-day training courses, specifically on decision-making, which is going into full detail about how we are making decisions, what tools, what techniques we can use to make our decision-making uh, process <coughs> more effective and easier. Because actually, making decisions is good for us. If we are, just think about, if we are sort of hung between two options, it's very stressful, isn't it? if you don't know what to choose. If somebody says, I have two news for you, one bad, one good, which one do you want? <laughs> Give me bad first, yeah. and then another one. <laughs> Just put me out of my misery. I don't want to suffer. And this is uh, happening on all levels with us all the time through our life. So making decision is important. It's good for us, good for our mental health, good for our well-being. And that is why, if you are interested uh, in improving your decision-making uh, skills, please do contact me. I can organize training for you specifically, or at least as a minimum. Uh, do take your time, look at handouts, uh, which I understand will circulate to you after this session. Because I did share with you quite a few useful tools and techniques that you can apply in your private life, and you also can apply in business. But of course, on training, uh, I do give uh, much, much more. And before I finish <coughs> and give you um, time for a question, I want to ask you another question. <laughs> there is a little picture, and there are five frogs sitting on the log. Five frogs. Nice, smiley, happy little frogs. And then one of the frogs decided to jump to the pool. How many frogs were left on the log? Four. Oh. Sir? Four? Four. Four. Oh. And? Five. Four and five. No, they were kind of like a log roll. Alicia, why do you think it was five? Because they decided to jump to the log, he did it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing 
he didn't. <laughs> he thought about it, but he didn't do it. and actually doing what you have decided. So what I wish you is to make your decisions with pleasure and implement them and get the full benefit of your decision making and the results which your decision making will bring. And remember, five little frogs, <coughs> decision is not everything. Thank you for your attention and if you would like to ask me any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Thank you.